Okay, right. In the beginning, God made man out of the dust of the earth. So that man lying there, the Bible says, was made in the image of God. In the image and in the likeness of God created God this man. But it was just dust, dead body. No life. So this man lying there was totally complete. And on the inside of his head, he had a thing called a brain. He must have had, because if you are dead and your spirit is out, I mean, all your organs are still there. They don't disappear when you die. So God made man out of the dust of the earth, and the Bible says, in the image and the likeness of God created he him. Now, both those words in the Hebrew tongue, image and likeness, both refer to physical image and likeness and not to spiritual image and likeness. So here comes God. There's the brain part of the body man, which is his thinking ability. Is that right? That is where his thoughts are harbored in his body. So God came and he blew the breath of life on that man, which is called the Spirit of Almighty God, which is referred to as the conscience of man. So when conscience combined with brain, something jumped up. And the man suddenly was alive, and he became a living soul. So the Bible says in James chapter 2, faith without works is dead. So the body without the spirit is dead. No mention made of the soul. If your spirit leaves your body, we don't say your soul left your body. We say your spirit. So the Bible says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So when God breathes spirit upon man, and the man's conscience, we call it subconscious. There's not actually such a thing. It's just a conscience. And the man stood up, and he became a living soul which is the mind of mankind. So man is living in his soul realm, which is a mind, which is run by the five senses. So theology, psychology, psychiatry agrees that the five senses works with the soul and the mind of man. But isn't it funny that the five senses has to do with your flesh? So how can they refer to it as soul? But if you bump your head very hard, some of the brain cells are dead. Your spirit is as alive as it always was. Christ is in you as much as he always was. Why is it that you say you got loss of memory? Why is it that you forget some things and you can't remember some things? Why is it that people have a stroke and some functions of the body doesn't work because some brain cells have been damaged and then they can't remember certain things? Uh All right? So there's uh, intertwinement of the spirit, the soul, and the body, which is called the brain, the mind, And the conscience, that is my thinking part of my body, my thinking part of my soul, the thinking part of my spirit. But God made that possible so that we can understand how to function. But if I take anyone out, I'm dead. A person is in an accident and they say he's brain dead. They keep him alive with machines. And they ask the family, shall we take the machines off? If we take the machines off, you'll be dead. Jeremiah 29, 11, just listen to it. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. The Amplifier says, I know the thoughts that I plan for you. King James says, I know the thoughts that I think for you. So God says, I've got thoughts that I'm thinking about you. 
Now, we know Psalm 8 says, what is man that God is mindful of him? So God's mind is filled with plans for you. So God is constantly thinking things about you. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. Thoughts of welfare and peace and not of evil. Okay. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. To give you hope. To give you hope? In your final outcome. Okay. Now I want to ask you. If God made you in the beginning before he made you to think. Before he breathed the spirit upon you. But you had the brain that was able to think. But before he made you to think. It's because it's when the spirit came in that the soul could start thinking now. So before he made you to think, he says, I want to tell you what is the thought that I'm thinking about man. The thoughts that I'm thinking about you, it's thoughts of peace, thoughts of hope, and it's not thoughts of evil. Now we want to take Psalm 8 that says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast made him a little lower than God himself, crowned him with glory and honor, and set him over the works of your hands to rule. Yes. So God's mind is filled with facts that you're going to rule. Yes. And to rule, you're going to have peace and hope. Yes. So if we want to come forth in the image of Christ, if we want to come forth in perfection, if we want to come forth as God has planned for us in the image of His dear Son, Galatians 4, 19, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, and Romans 8, verse 29 and 30, then how many times do we think evil? And how many times do we think peace and hope? So God says, if those are not your thoughts then this must be the thoughts. If this is the thoughts, then this can't be the thoughts. Now listen to Isaiah 55, verse 7 through 11. Let the wicked forsake his ways. Let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have love, pity, and mercy for him. And to our God, for he will multiply to him his abundant pardon. For so God says, if your thoughts are not like God is thinking, and you come back to him in repentance, he will have abundant mercy. He will pour out grace. He will just bless you. Because God's whole desire is to make man in his own image. To put his spirit in him so that he can have a living soul, so that he can think thoughts of peace and hope. But you've got to repent of all the other thoughts if you want that. Listen to the rest. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So God says, these two can't work together. My thoughts are not your thoughts. So God says you cannot think evil and peace and hope at the same time. Okay? Okay. So where do we think these thoughts? In our brain, in our spirit, our conscience, or in our mind, our soul? Where do we think it? Verses 1 through 3. Wait and listen, everyone who is thirsty. Come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy with priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for what does not satisfy? Mm, I think we did that last week, didn't we? Okay. Hearken diligently to me and eat what is good. And let okay, the King James would say, listen. And let your soul delight itself. Okay, let your soul delight itself. So God says, if you are thirsty and come to me and listen to what I have to say, the thing that will be revived is your soul will experience a revival. So he says, if you listen to the words that I have to say, I'm going to bring a revival to your soul. So God could have just as well said, I want to bring a revival to your thinkings. 
I want to bring a revival to your thought life. I want to bring a revival to the way you meditate. I want to bring a revival to what you are thinking. And if you can think my thoughts, okay, read the rest. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Okay, the soul will delight itself in fatness, which is the anointing. Okay? Come to me, hear, and your soul will revive. Come to me, and what will happen? Your soul will revive. Does all the Bible say that? So if we come to God, if you come unto me, the anointing, the fatness, what does the anointing do? Isaiah 10 and 27 says, because of the anointing, the yoke shall be destroyed. Okay? So there's a burden. So God says, if you will listen to me, that pressing burden thing on your soul will be destroyed by the fatness of the anointing if you will only listen to my word. If you will only listen to what I have to say and come unto me, your soul will revive. So let the unrighteous forsake his thoughts. Don't think evil thoughts. Think thoughts of peace and hope. Right, verse 11, 10, 11. For as the rain and snow come down. For as heavens, the rain, verse 1 says, if you are thirsty. So verse 10 says, so as the rain and the snow, which brings the water. So as the rain and the snow. And return not there again. Comes down from heaven and return not again. But water the earth. And what does it do? It waters the earth. So it started off with, if you are thirsty. Now it says, the rain and the snow comes down and it waters the earth. It doesn't go back to heaven. So. So shall my word be. So shall my word be. That goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect. Useless. That word void is empty. It's chaotic. So God says the word going out of his mouth will not return to him void. But there is a prerogative. There is a condition. you got to listen to the word and if you listen to the word the anointing will take the burden that is pressing on your mind away when you come to him and you will experience a revival in your soul which means you will start thinking like God which will be thoughts of peace and hope that will bring you back to the image that God intended you to be in and you will be able to rule because uh, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts that I'm thinking about you, thoughts of peace and of hope and not of evil, to prove to you what your outcome will be in the end. But didn't Jesus say something in Matthew 11:28? 28, come to me? All ye who are burned or and heavy laden, and I will give you learn of me. In other words, listen when I speak. And what will happen? You shall find rest for your So if you are burdened, where do you go to? Which pills do you take? Do you go for a workout or now they got to chill out? So Colossians, verse number one of chapter number three of Colossians, awesome book. If then ye have been raised with Christ to a new love, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. When God made you in the beginning in Adam, you were dead. So he had to raise him from the dead by breathing his spirit into him to give him back a living soul so that he could have a thinking ability to act like God. So uh, if he are then risen with Christ to newness of life, I can prove that to you out of Romans. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwell in us, he will also quicken our mortal bodies. Okay? So I can give you more scripture. This mortal body will be quickened if I receive the Spirit of Christ in me. Yes. To a new life, thus sharing His resurrection. From, aim it. And seek the rich eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now listen to verse 2. Set your minds 
and keep them set on what is above the higher things not on the things that are on the earth for as far as this world is concerned you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God set your minds and what keep them set on what is above and then he explains that a higher type yeah. of thinking for these thoughts are not my thoughts says God I am not evil I don't think evil I think thoughts of peace and hope and a prosperous future I know the outcome that I have planned for you it's one where peace and hope will take control of your thinking life no more burdens no more pressing down in your mind no more trouble in your soul come unto me have a revival in your soul if you then are risen with Christ sit your minds that is your soul and keep them set on higher thoughts Amen. doesn't Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 say seeing that we are surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every sin and every weight and sin that so easily beset us then he says two things he says we must look away from all that will distract by looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he says there's weights that's going to start to press you down there's going to be burdens that's going to weight you down in your soul in your mind but if you come to me and listen to my word and learn of me and then set your minds on me by looking unto me and not at the distractions that want to weight you down and keep them set on the higher things you will find something out that your life is hidden with Christ in God now who's going to find you there if your life is hidden with Christ in God, but He tells you exactly how to get there by setting your mind and keep them set on the things which are above. Even as a man thinketh, so is he. So a uh, man stood up a living soul. That's exactly what you are, what you think. Paul writes to Timothy and he says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 6 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So God says, I've actually given you a spirit. So Holy Spirit, come unto me. Oh, I receive your spirit. He says, part of that spirit is a sound mind. Oh, my mind is leaving me. We can all see that. Why is your mind leaving you? Why don't you just go to Jesus and get a revival in your soul, get peace in your heart, get the weights off, get the anointing to break the yoke, get a revival in your soul, and get a sound mind? Now let's just turn two pages back to Philippians 4. Verse 6, Amplified Bible. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. English translation, don't worry. But in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount God over your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, 
Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. If there is any virtue and excellence. If there is anything worthy of praise. Think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Thank you. Practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it. And the God of peace, now listen to this, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. So it says, if you want an untroubled mind, the thing you need to do is think right. Now, it's good to study verses 5, 6, and 7. You know, don't be anxious, but go to God with your wants and tell Him what you want, you know? And then God's peace will be your portion. But He says, I can give you a shortcut. Finally, rather from the first moment, think The things that are just, pure, holy, and the God of peace shall be with you without you trying not to be anxious. Now, Jesus said something in Matthew 7. He says, I will show you if somebody listens to my word and do it, I will show you that I will compare him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And when the storms came, It couldn't do anything to him because he decided to listen to my word. So who gets burdened down? Who gets pressed down? The people that do not listen to the word. I can take you scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Listen and your soul shall live. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. So if I listen to the word, James chapter 1, 21. If I receive the word with a humble spirit, like Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. He says, my soul shall be saved. Yes. Or my soul shall be revived, Isaiah 55. So I can have a continuous soulish revival. That means a constant sound mind. That means that tranquil state of peace and hope that God says, this is the thought that I'm thinking. If it's any other thought, it's not my thought. So why don't you just think the other thoughts? If you want to, let's go to Mark chapter 4. Verse 13. He said to them, do you not discern and understand this parable? How then is it possible for you to discern and understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. Now Matthew says the sower is the son of God and the seed is the word of God. Uh Verse 16 says in the same way the ones on the stony ground hear the word and at once receive and accept and welcome it. Verse 17 and they have no real root in themselves Mm. so they endure for a little while then when trouble Mm. or persecution arises Uh on account of the word They immediately are offended. The word comes, the sower, the son of God. He says, listen to me, learn of me, and you will have rest for yourselves. So he comes and he sows his word. To bring what? Peace to your soul. So he says, and after the word has come to bring peace to your soul, there will be troubles, burdens, Storms, according to Matthew, say, it will come for the word's sake. Otherwise, why did he bring you the word? If it can't be tested, why do you want to have a stamp of approval on it? And that troubles, if you didn't learn how to handle them, the word will be stolen. Verse 18, the one sown among the thorns are the others who hear the word Listen to verse 19. This is Philippians 4. Then the cares and the anxieties of the world and the distractions of the age. What does it do? 
It suffocates the word. It chokes the word. And what happens to the word? It becomes fruitless. Verse 20 says, And those sown in the good, good, well-adapted soil are the ones who hear the word and receive and accept and welcome it and bear fruit some 30 30 times as much as was sown, some 60 times as much, and some 100 times as much. And he said to them, Is the lamp brought in to be put under a peck measure or under a bed and not on the lampstand? Why is it that Mark when he tells the story of the parable of the sower, puts in with it, he says, if the seed is sown on fruitful ground, and some comes with 30, 60, and 100 fold, uh, would you take a lamp and put it under a bed or under a bush, or, or do you put it on a lampstand? Why does he ask it? So let's get the context in Luke 11. 33. No one after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or crypt or under a bushel measure, but on a lampstand. But in Luke, it's got nothing to do with the sower that sows. Neither in Matthew. So your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye, now this one says in brackets your conscience, but Proverbs says it's the window of your soul, is sound and fulfilling its office, Your whole body is full of light. But when it is not sound and it is not fulfilling its office, your body is full of darkness. Be careful, therefore, that the light that is in you is not darkness. If then your entire body is illuminated, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright with light, as when a lamp with its bright rays, give you light. So he says, if you want to understand this, why will you light a lamp and put it under a bushel? He says, okay, you struggle to understand. Your eyes are the light of your body. So if your body is light, You are a whole man. Chapter 12, verse 22. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. For life is more than meat, and the body is more than clothes and raiment. Verse 26. If you then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take you thought for the rest? So if your thinking doesn't get your body full of clothes and your stomach full of food, why do you think of all the other things that must happen in your life? Verse 29. Seek not what you shall eat, Or what you shall drink, referring to thinking. Is that right? If you go to Colossians, the Amplified says, seek the things above. King James says, think on the things above. So seek what you shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after or think after. But your father knows that you have need of these things. But rather seek or think the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Verse 35. So let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Loins girded, it says, be ready. And if you read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, it says more or less the same thing. So it says, let your lights be burning. Matthew 5 says in verse 14, 15, and 16, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works. 
But he says, first, you must get your whole man illuminated. Talking about your body, which is your flesh. If I can get my flesh illuminated. Let's jump to Romans 8 and see if we can close. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. No judging guilty or wrong. For those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. He says, we've discussed no condemnation. We've discussed what Jesus did on the cross. We've discussed it all. But there's a little portion that still stands there that preachers have preached through the years. You must walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. So we've tried our best with Galatians 5, 16. If we walk in the Spirit, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We've tried to explain in every way how to not be fleshly, but how to be spiritual. How to not be carnal, but how to be spiritual. But there it stands after 2,000 years still. The condemnation will fall away if I walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But I'm then a flesh person. And my flesh is then run by my five senses, which is controlled by my mind. So how can I then live after the Spirit and not be condemned? Let's go to verse 5. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds... on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh but those who are according to the spirit are controlled by the desires of the spirit set their minds and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit now the mind of the flesh is death but the mind of the spirit is life and peace because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God but it's all the same mind if you are living in the flesh it's because you've set your mind if you are living in the spirit it's because you have set your mind nothing spooky nothing hyper spiritual Nothing floating around in smoke. All got to do with. We had the saying, it's all in the head. They were right. It is as a man thinketh. So easy. So, Colossians 3 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, set your minds. And keep your mind set on the higher thoughts. Nothing spiritual. So, if you walk after the Spirit, you will be a person with no condemnation. Your whole being will be illuminated and you will think thoughts of peace and hope and not of evil. So, to qualify this, you've got to put that weight in the balance that we discussed already here today. So if I set my mind on earthly things, on fleshly things, I'm a fleshly person. If I set my mind on spiritual things, I'm a spiritual person. Let's go to verse 9. But you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit. If the Spirit of God dwells within you, But if anyone does not possess the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. But if Christ lives in you, your body is dead by reason of sin and guilt. The Spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
then he who raised up Christ from the dead will also restore to life your mortal yes. Come on. Yes. bodies. If you are living in the spirit, he says, your body is dead. No, he didn't say your body is dead. He said he's dead to sin. But if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead is in you, then that spirit will quicken this dust, mortal, flesh, man, and you will be an illuminated being. So you're not a ghost. You're not a spook. God has given you a dust body. And God wants this body to be totally illuminated. We've got the treasure inside earthen vessels. Christ will be manifested in our bodies. Christ will be seen in our bodies. Christ will be seen in our physical natures. We will be able to touch the sick, calm the storms, walk on water, quench the fires. We will be able to do the impossible in our mortal bodies. But it's, uh, where's your mind? If I can just get these thoughts of mine under control, you can. My children's going to make me mad. The cat's going to make me mad. The dog's going to make me mad. This work is going to make me. I'm, I'm going to keep driving up the walls. And you're all talking about, you are telling people what you are thinking. The Bible says in Proverbs, a fool tells everything that's on his mind. A wise man keeps it back till later. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 11. For what person perceives, knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts, except the man's own spirit within him? Listen and let your soul live today. Just so, no one discerns and come to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have not received the Spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God. That we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the divine favor and blessing so freely bestowed on us. By God. What did I just read? I just read, God has put His Spirit in us so that we can think His thoughts. How do I know where my mind is? By listening to what you're talking and who you're talking to and what you're saying to everybody. Martha, Martha, your mind is troubled and over-exhausted by many things. We did it last night. But why don't you come and sit at my feet and learn of me? Matthew 11. But your mind is always with this, that, and your mind is running all over the show. Except on the spiritual things that are higher. So it's so simple to be spiritual. That it's actually laughable. But uh, we will go to the, every extent to just try and be spiritual. Why don't you just work on your mind? Why don't you just think the right stuff? Verse 14, but the natural, the non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and the teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. Who can see what we're reading here? He says, you know what makes you carnal, natural, and unspiritual? You're not listening when the word is going out, and you don't think and meditate on those things later on. Then Satan comes and steals the word. But if you take that word, listen and do it, you will produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. And that will make you to shine your light and not put it under a bushel. And when your whole body is illuminated, you will be a man that's not walking in the flesh because your whole body will be light. So what do we want right? Our flesh man. 
If I want to get my flesh right, I've got to get my mind right. If I want to get my spirit right, I've got to get my mind right. Because God made me a living soul. So the thing I can work with is my mind. But am I not supposed to work with my spirit? I know it says uh, God has washed our consciences from dead works by the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus has cleared my conscience. But how can I now live according to this clear conscience? By thinking. But how can I think so deeply? By thinking how you're thinking about the dress you want to buy tomorrow. So to be spiritual is nothing deep. To be fleshly is nothing deep. It's the exact same thing that makes you fleshly is the exact same thing that makes you spiritual. It's where do you set your mind? Because God made you a living soul. Now listen to verse 16. For who has known or understood the mind of the Lord as to guide and instruct him, to give him knowledge? But we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts of his heart. Do we? Listen to Job 4 verse 12. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a whisper of it. In thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falls on men. So he's talking about dreaming. Fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed before my face, and the hair of my flesh stood up. You have felt it too. And then the spirit stood still, but I could not discern the appearance of it. A form was before my eyes, and there was silence. And then I heard a voice saying, Can mortal man be just before God? Or be more right than he is? Can a man be pure before his maker? Or be more cleansed than he is? You haven't got the spirit of God to instruct God. You've got the Spirit of God so that He can instruct you. So forsake your thoughts and get His thoughts. And I know my thoughts, says God, that I'm thinking it's peace, hope, and a prosperous outcome of perfection in the future and not evil. So if you will cut that out, And not set your mind on the flesh, but set your mind on the spirit and keep your mind set on higher things. Then the burdens will be lifted because the anointing will come on your soul. You will have a soulish revival because you are a living soul, which will make your soul to tell your spirit, please rule. So my soul either pulls up my spirit or pulls down my flesh. And that's the ruling factor in your life. You see, we think, oh, I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. It's right. It's good teachings. But all those circles has not helped anybody. You've got a spirit, soul, and a body. Okay, this one has got a conscience to think, this one has got a mind to think, this one has got a brain to think. The three can converse with one another. But the dominating one is your soul. Your senses. So we walk by faith and not by sight. How do we change it? By setting my mind. On the things that is of higher quality. That'll pull up my spirit man. And 
and then my body is dead to sin, but alive unto God. If your body is dead, we will bury you. We have a weird idea about spirituality. You still got a body to walk around with. And it's this body that will carry around the glory of Almighty God. And it's this flesh body that you must get in line with the Word of God. How do I get in line? By thinking right. Oh, but I'm supposed to walk in the Spirit. Think right. I'm supposed to not be in the flesh. Think right. It's not two things. It's the same thing. I set my mind and I keep it set on the right things. But if I set my mind on the anxieties and the worries, I become a flesh person. So you make a decision today. God made you a flesh body, first of all. Breathed on you so that you can stand up a living soul. So if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now in you, your mortal body will again be revived, refreshed, and you will be that living soul that thinks right, talks right, walk right, do right. Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.